It's a big weekend of racing coming up at Sha Tin this Sunday with a 10 race program with all weather and turf racing, but it is also the start of the four year old series on the road to the Derby. We're almost set to go, the classic mile, they're underway. Classic Mile, Classic Cup and then the BMW Hong Kong Derby upcoming for the four-year-olds, Tom. But for the first leg, there's really only one horse talked about, isn't there? There certainly is, Mark. Hello to you and everyone. It's Helios Express, who is the top-rated horse in the race on 102. Uh, very good turn of foot from him last uh, time out. And barring any bad luck, he looks, I think, the winner of this year's Classic Mile. Jackpots, Paul. There's plenty in jackpot man purse for Wednesday night, but what about for this meeting on Sunday? Yeah, there's a good one on uh, Sunday as well. We've got uh, four million going into the triple trio, so that should get over the seven uh, million mark. Yeah, good meeting this one. We've got uh, obviously the feats race, but the centenary vase looks good as well. It is. It is group three over the 1800 metres. Straight into the full meeting details we go with uh, a sweep across Sha Tin. Both those courses will get some use with the two on the all weather. It's race one and also race 10 and eight on the turf. We kick off at one o'clock. The two races we focus on mainly, it's race number seven, the Hong Kong Classic Mile, but also a look at the Centenary Vase at 20 minutes to five o'clock Hong Kong time. The Classic Mile has Helios Express at the top of the book. One time winner over 1600 metres from his only look. How deep is your love? First go at the distance for him. Elaine Feeling, two starts for a win and a second. Beauty Crescent's placed six from 10 during his career here. Fallon's unbeaten at the mile and Star Mac is on a seven day backup. The speed map here, Tom, has Cheng Cheng Glory leading and everybody getting their chance. Yeah, they, they should do in a, a smallish field here of uh, nine. Cheng Cheng Glory might get a little bit of pressure here uh, from Moments in Time, who has been known to roll forward to and lead in the past. And I think they'll be mindful of not wanting to let uh, Cheng Cheng Glory get away with too many soft sectionals in front like he has been able to do in the past. Uh, so he won't be far away. Helene Feeling trailed last uh, time out. Helios Express should end up in a, a perfect spot. And uh, Fallon Paul, we've seen his racing style when he's been able to uh, win uh, back and swooping down the outside. Yeah, that's what he should do. Star Mac uh, likewise as well. So um, how deep is your love? Might be a little bit slightly further back. Is Previous winners of this race, Tom, and what an awesome lineup of horses that have won this back to 2019. Yeah, terrific horses have been able to invariably win the, the Hong Kong Classic Mile and go on with it, maybe with the exception of Excellent Proposal, who never really went on with it at all. But uh, Voyage Bubble, Romantic Warrior, uh, Golden 60 there as well. Um, Furore on his way, of course, uh, to a, a derby as well. And the horse that is expected to add his name to that list of winners is this guy. And delighted to say the jockey off Helios Express joins us on Racing to Win. Hugh, welcome to the show. Thank you for your time. And how was the golf game? Mark, good afternoon. Yeah, no, it was great. We had a good afternoon and it's always good to be on the golf course and uh, on days in between racing and looking forward to the weekend ahead. Must have been nice also to get out to what has been a quite up and down week of racing for you here in Hong Kong. Yes, it certainly has. I mean, Sunday was a day to forget, but of course, Wednesday night was a day to remember. So, um, yeah, the, the, ups and, the ups and downs of the racing industry, but I've seen all corners this week and hopefully we can continue the momentum from Wednesday night into Sunday. The body's all good. Of course, you're back not too long from previous injuries and you were limping quite badly last Sunday, but look to be moving freely on Wednesday night. Yeah, no, I, I was lucky, actually. I, I mean... Yeah, it was an unfortunate situation on Sunday, but we came through. Yeah, I was pretty sore after it, but I had a bruised calf muscle. I had a decent cork, and yeah, with a bit of treatment from the physios at the in the jockey's room, Chris and um, and others, it's been good. Yeah, it's been good to get through that, and it's much better now. We've got you on the show to talk about uh, good things and Helios Express is one of them. That win last time was absolutely awesome. Did it feel as good riding him as it looked? Yeah, I, was, I actually did say to John Size 
post race, I said it's been some time since I've felt that sort of acceleration, and uh, I was super impressed with his performance. Um, he showed the class of a of a genuine top line horse, in my opinion, and yeah, we're excited about look what uh, what's in store this Sunday. That was a step up to 1,600 metres for the first time for him and he just seemed to handle it so well and looked like he ran through the line just as well. Yeah, no, he did. He, the, for, for me, the most impressive part was the way he relaxed mid-race. I mean, you know, there was a bit of pace on early. I expected to sort of be a bit closer than I was, but there was plenty of pressure in the early stages and the way he was able to adapt and come back when I asked him to and switch off, is a sign of a horse that's um, really mentally mature and, and I feel like that's the key to his success. He's the top rated horse in the, the race, uh, Hugh, off a rating of uh, 102. Uh, how did you see his trial uh, uh, sort of 10 days ago on the All Weather at Charton? He looked to move pretty freely there and looked happy within himself? Yeah, he certainly did, Tom. He Look, I, I thought it was a much better trial than the previous trial, the one leading up to his previous victory. Not 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 so much the way he went through the line, just the way he he jumped out. He had he had the natural pace which he does, but he he just really switched off and waited for my command. That's what impressed me the most and I think I, I just think he's going through the, the preparation really well mentally. I mean physically you can see what he's got. He's shown it in every start he's racing in Hong Kong and yeah the the mental side of it's for me the most important going a mile and possibly beyond but who knows but uh, I think he's in good shape for the weekend. So let's go back to Wednesday night and talk about what a great night it was you cut it very fine on a happy golf but you've struck up a, an excellent association with that horse. Yeah I have and I, I think he, he enjoyed the move to Happy Valley and yeah, that's my third win on him, and I've had a great association. But he, he's a very competitive horse. He, he loves to compete, but the the key to him is just getting in to conserve that energy in the early stages. And once I did that, he got into a good rhythm. From that point, I was in a good position and always confident until I threw the whip away at the 50 metre mark. That worried me a bit. But um, no, he, he he was he's been a consistent horse, and I was proud of him once again. One of the other, other rides on the program, Hugh, of course, is Elliptical, who's dropping back in grade with the, the blinkers on. He performed very well in Australia with the, the blinkers on. Where do you feel he's at at the moment for the weekend over 2,000 metres? Look, I think he's... Well, it's the first time he's drawn a good barrier, or reasonable barrier at the very least. But, yeah, the, I think the blinkers on are, are definitely an asset. He's obviously on a derby course. I was satisfied when I rode him over the mile. Uh, two starts ago, I thought he, he raced. I thought he raced well. If he finished two to two and a half lengths better, I would have been through the roof as far as from a Derby perspective. But uh, the other day, I think was a little inconclusive. Uh, up, you know, it was a bit of a quick back up to two thousand uh, without the blinkers. It was a muddly run race. I thought he was okay, but you know, I'd like, you know, look from the. From this horse's perspective, I'm looking from a derby point of view more so than this weekend, and I'd really like to see a real step up in performance from him, but I think he's capable of doing it. Uh, Hugh, one of your earlier rides, uh, a horse called Less is More, on debut, he was a big price. He was 23 to 1, and he ran really nice, I thought. Um, finished off the race really strongly over the 1,000. Do you think he's a horse that can go on with it, Less is More? I like the horse, and that's what, you know, and... He showed that he can sort of do things a bit keenly. He's a little bit overactive in his in his work. So, yeah, Frankie and I decided a 1,000 metres might be suitable, which obviously it was because he ran particularly well. Uh, we go back to the 1,000 again just to enforce to him that he needs to relax in the early stages. And I do feel that the 1,000 is probably a bit short of his best distance. Uh, and I will ride him to relax, and once he does relax, well, I'll ensure that he's there to finish, and I've got no doubt that he'll perform particularly well, but I do think um, win, lose or draw, he'll be better once he gets, gets over a bit further. 
and straight Aaron uh, here you've picked up the, the ride aboard him he's uh, no doubt uh, headed towards the city Hong Kong Gold Cup 1600 not totally ideal for him last time out but uh, what's the, the feedback here on uh, straight Aaron lining up in the group three handicap well I think it's well I love the fact I've drawn three uh, I think that's a real asset and and again he looks a really good challenge to, to the, the champ Ro romantic warrior in the in the gold cup but you know, in, there's two ways of looking at this. It's a preparation race for the for the Gold Cup, or he's the best horse in the race, and he he has to carry the the top weight penalty for that. But with Barrier Three, I can just settle him where he's comfortable, and get a good running transit. And you know, I'll, I'll you know, for me, I'm looking forward to riding him here in Hong Kong. And yeah, if he can win, lose, or draw, well, perform well here. Um, I think he's a genuine Gold Cup chance. Hugh, thank you for your time here on Racing to Win. Now you're busy. We'll let you get back to the 19th green for Lemonade, but uh, we do wish you all the best for uh, Sunday at Sha Tin. No, thank you for having me on the show. Big thanks to Hugh Bowman giving us some time to talk mainly about Helios Express. We'll talk more with the boys about other runners in the Classic Mile and also the Centenary Vars after the break. Still plenty more to come on Racing to Win, but on the way to the break, a couple of the Hong Kong racing scribes drop by to give their thoughts on this year's Classic Mile. <laughs> I'm going to take Helios Express, um, probably a short price favourite to win, but he's been the benchmark for four-year-olds and I think he's going to be very hard to beat here. He just continues to improve, he keeps answering every question asked of him and I think this weekend he's, he's got the form, the runs on the board and the right jockey to win. In terms of a, a, a value pick, probably Starmac, I think he continues to improve, I like his finish and I think with each race in the four-year-old series he's going to keep stepping up each time, so those two for me this weekend. This weekend, I think Helios Express is very hard to look away from. He's been very progressive so far this season. Stepping up to the 1600 last time out, he was extremely impressive, and I do think he is definitely the one to beat. If there is a horse who I think who could run well, it is Moments in Time, who looks like the penny's starting to drop with him. He had three lacklustre runs after coming over from Chile. He's a Chilean Group 1 winner, and as I say, I think the, the penny's starting to drop. His run last time out, a happy valley when he stayed on into second he was prominent throughout it looked like the race was going to suit a closer but he stayed on stoutly so hopefully moments in time can run a big race welcome back to racing to win the break is over that can only mean one thing we have to move out of the way of the screen paul and reveal <laughs> who it is for the last run reminder. Yeah, look, uh, Swan Bay, uh, it was a very good run from him last time. He, he ran second off a rating of 66. Uh, this is his run here. You can see he drew wide as well. So they had to go back with him, rather, otherwise he would have been trapped wide. He's drawn really nicely in this race, so he should get a, a run a lot closer. Uh, and you can see they went slow in this race, 66 uh, slower than standard. And um, he was still last with about the 200 metre mark and really ran on strongly and ran a really nice second in this race. And uh, the handicappers didn't move him off his rating, which is uh, very nice of them as well. So uh, CP uh, Brave uh, won this race really well and he, he, he's been a revelation. But uh, Swan Bay, he wasn't too far away uh, with a, a better barrier draw uh, closer into the race. I think he can, uh, he can run a big race. There it is. Last one reminder for Paul. Race five, number nine, Swan Bay. Back to the classic mile we go now. We've heard from Hugh Bowman. Well, Cheng Cheng Glory's been in grand form and the man that rides him on Sunday is Lyle Hewitson. Here's Lyle with Tom. Cheng Cheng Glory going around in the classic mile. He's had a, a terrific rise up through the ranks from Griffin Company. Um, is he a, a good enough horse, you think, to, to take that next step? Yeah, well, I've had time, time for him from day one. Um, whether he's good enough to take the next step over a mile or whether it's going to be further is my question. Um, look, we, we're under no um, illusions that uh, there's, some, there's some smart opposition in the race, um, particularly the John Sires horse. Um, so it, we, we've got a task in front of us, but I think he maps well in this race. He's very consistent and he raises the bar just enough each time to, to put himself right, right there at the finish. So. I expect him to, to deliver the goods once again um, and whether that be into the, to the minor money or if we can go better than that, we'll, we'll be very happy. But um, he's done well at home and um, like I said, he, he's done us proud so hopefully he can do it again. He's obviously, as you said, been very effective over a mile but do you think he's sort of 
got that, that extra in him if they're looking at a, a classic cup or a, a derby berth. Well, is he a horse that gives you the, the feel that he will handle 18 or 2,000? I've always been of the opinion that that's, that's going to suit him more. Um, his, his sire, of course, was, was the outside miler um, particularly. So, you know, we, we've got to see him do it over further. But um, he's, he's given us the, the impression every time that he's looking for the extra. And uh, he's just such an easy going horse in, in, the, in the run that um, I think it will suit him when, when we step up. And if he were to take that next step, um, it will probably be when he gets over further. You've always been a big supporter, Paul, of Ching Ching Glory. You can see his stats behind you on the big screen there. How do you assess him in the Classic Mile? Well, I'm going to include him because if he does get a cheap lead and uh, gets away with it, then it's, it's going to be tough. But he's up against some really good horses in this race. And, uh, look, it's a massive step up for him. I, look, I hope he does well, but uh, I've only got him in on a minor line. Yeah, just got him in on a minor line as well. He's obviously £14 pounds better off with Fallon for that meeting last time out now that they meet here at uh, level weights. But uh, I think there's a, a few in front of him here at this sort of level now. A couple of visiting jockeys in town, Tom, for this meeting. One is Mikhail Barzalona. The other one is the man that's on How Deep Is Your Love, James McDonald back. Mikhail rides at Speed Dragon in the race. Never been beyond 1,400 metres. How deep is your love? I think the mile, the way he runs, should suit him. Um, but his best form certainly has been at uh, Happy Valley. All of his uh, wins there, but not disgraced by any stretch at uh, Sha Tin. Um, and I, I think he's certainly got claims uh, in this race, but, but is he... He's off that sort of rating now, Paul, of 95. Is he is he good enough to, to take the next step here, I wonder? Yeah, look, I, I didn't include him then because I, I just think he's a better Happy Valley horse. I'd, I'd like to see him do, do it here at, um, at Shards. And it, look, as you say, he, he deserves the rating, but a lot of it's come off Happy Valley wins. Star Mac Paul is on the quick back up from last week. Now, it's only a small field and he does like to get back. Are you concerned about the tempo of the race with this horse? Yeah, not, not really. More just the, the rating, really. He's only rated in the 60s. He's 64 and he's up against a horse that's over 100. That, that sort of worries me a bit. Yeah, I think he's had a struggle here. A seven-day turnaround uh, was able to weave through uh, traffic here over the, the final stages behind uh, Sweet Encounter and closed nicely late. But uh, that rating against, uh, what, 64 versus 102, 98, 95. It's a, it's a stiff ask. If he, if he places, he's going to get a huge whack in the ratings. And that is Star Mac. Helene Feeling, Tom, is one horse that will run a strong 1,600 metres. He's been there twice at Sha Tin for a win and a place. Uh, he ran third last time behind Happy Together. We're about to see the replay of that third in the January Cup. Zach Purton looking for that uh, elusive uh, classic mile victory on his uh, CV. He had a lovely run of the trail here last time out behind uh, Happy Together, who looks a, a very big chance in the centenary vase. Just wondered if he peaked late on his run here, Paul. Yeah, he could well have done. He, he's a horse that's, again, his rating is, is in the 90s. So, look, I think he's got claims. I think he is one of the main chances from Barrier 5. He should get a nice trail in behind. So, yeah, he definitely goes in. We heard Jack Dawling from the South China Morning Post Racing Department before the break. Uh, Paul, throw out... A bit of a mention for this horse, moments in time. He runs second here, but it was down into class three for him. Yeah, he's too zip at, um, happy, at Sha Tin. I mean, this was uh, the best run we've seen from him in Hong Kong and was at uh, Happy Valley. So uh, I, I, he's got barrier eight. He might just have to work across to get outside Chang Chang Glory. So look, he didn't go in for me. They went 27.66 in the early stages of this race and even the, the tempo was OK. He was still a little bit keen. So just worry if there's a, a lack of tempo here, he might fire up. Beauty Crescent, uh, Tom, he's been extremely consistent, this horse. Good draw, Andrea at Zaney, having his first look over 1,600 metres. He should have won this race, really, uh, if it wasn't for some bad luck here in the straight, Beauty Crescent. That, that's been the case for a few times in his career now. It's his first time beyond uh, 1,400 metres. You can see badly held up here behind, runners nowhere to, to go, and then has to angle out and lose all of that momentum, Paul. He's, he's only gone down ahead as well. Yeah, it was a good run, definitely. Um, he's still a maiden from 10 starts, though, but he, as you say, probably should have uh, broken through here. The 1600 looks good for him. He was on the cusp for me. He probably would have been next one in. That is a detailed look at the runners in the Classic Mile. Paul, who are you with? Going to go with Fallon. I think Fallon is the untapped horse in the race and he can overcome the $1.30 or $1.20 chance Helios Express, who's going to be very short. Uh, but look, Helios Express has got the um, he's, he's got the wins on the board. Helene Feeling, Cheng Cheng Glory, 8136. Helios, is, Helios Express rather is the one I think they have to beat in this lineup here. He's got the rating, uh, Hugh Bowman, John Size, the turn of foot uh, that he produced. I think he's good enough to uh, certainly win this. Uh, shout for Speed Dragon. I think he can have something to say here. He's still got a bit to find on his rating, but uh, he might be a bit closer this time round. I feel. Uh, Helene feeling number three and six, Chang Chang Glory. One, seven, three and six. 
That is a detailed look at the Classic Mile, but the feature racing does not stop there. We're going to turn the page now on to race number eight for the Group 3 Centenary Vars at 4.40 and straight Aaron up in trip, winner two from three course and distance. Money Catcher and Senor Toba both wear visors. Super Sunny Singh up to 1800 metres again and the tongue tie goes on. Fantastic Treasure out of Group 1 Racing behind Voyage Bubble in the Stewards Cup. Cheek pieces are off him. 5G Patch, both his wins have been further and Nimble Nimbus two starts at the 1800 for a couple of placings. Pace here, Tom comes from Money Catcher, Encountered and Champion Dragon. Yeah, Money Catcher will no doubt to try and lead this. Uh, Champion Dragon won't be far away. Paul looks Tricky for horses like Super Sunny Singh. Yeah, he does. He's going to have to get back, I think. And um, I just thought Encountered uh, and Money Catcher can come across together. It's 1,800 metres, so it's a, a long run to that first bend. We can break it straight down, Tom, into the main lead-up race because so many of the horses come out of this race. Elaine Feeling goes to the Classic Mile from this. It's the January Cup with two, four, six, seven of them backing up in the Centenary Vars. Yeah, I think it's a big opportunity here for um, the winner of this race, Happy Together, to uh, put another win on the board. Uh, he carried 115 here. He was out of the handicap. He's only got an extra three pounds to carry here, and he, he ran to them easily here in the, the straight pool and put them away. So if he runs up to that sort of performance here against most of these rivals, he wins again, I think. Yeah, he, he, he can. He can. I, I thought uh, there was clear excuses for Encounter there. He was three wide at the back the whole way, and he's already a Group 3 winner over 1,800 metres here this season, winning the Sasa Ladies' Purse, so I think he's a big chance. Well, Master was actually ace in that race that come forward to this race. Paul, who wins it? Uh, encountered to beat uh, Happy Together, I think that's the way it's going to finish. So uh, two to beat six. Last City Blanche ran second in that race, and uh, straight Aaron just maybe a little bit short for him. Two six thirteen one. Certainly think Happy Together can uh, win this. I've got straight Aaron in for a second at number one. We see a tune up for the Gold Cup fourteen right down the bottom. Spirited Express has got some Helios Express form there, and Super Sunny Singh drops a lot on the weights here, but we'll need like six one fourteen seven. All races available, race by race analysis on the website, hkjc.com. Click on audio and video. Been a busy, busy show this one, Paul. We're getting near the end, so it's best bet time. Yeah, gummy, gummy for me in the last. Uh, we've got an all-weather race here to finish. Now, we'll have a look at this race here. It was uh, basically uh, on the turf. Now, he, he gets beaten by Galaxy Patch, who's unbeaten on the turf here in Hong Kong. These two go clear. He's never really done anything on the turf, this horse, in Hong Kong. He's had four starts on the all-weather for two wins, two seconds, comes back onto the all-weather weather with a lot of pace in the race can sit behind it second up i think you can win gummy gummy so he's the best and we'll do the long shot earlier in the day race two number 12 gangnam star look he's he, he ran really well on his debut over a thousand and then hit 1200 meters back to a thousand things good for him and the play in race eight two six thirteen qqp Best for me comes up a little later on it's a bowman ride here with joy of spring casper founds here from uh, his effort last time out, I think he's a, a big chance here. You can see making really good ground over the final stages uh, here. And then he comes up behind these horses and has uh, stopped at his tracks at about the, the 150 metres and has to uh, balk a bit there, but then again gets going late in the piece. I think he can uh, run a big race here at Joy of Spring up to the 1400 metres. The value is k -ing generation of the 2000 metres, race five, number four, Pierre Andrea Razzini making ground last time out. And the play comes up in race seven, Helio. Express, Helene feeling with Speed Dragon to add the value. Simple Hedge goes to 2,000 metres for the first time. It draws Barrier 1. Zach Purton off a six-timer last weekend. It's won three from ten. Placed behind Fallon last start. And Paul tipping Fallon to win the Classic Mile. So the form around him, good. Victory moments went off short a couple of times at his first two starts. And then longer odds at his next two. His first up from a break. We haven't seen him for some time. His two trials have looked good. And the play, race five, a QQP. Three simple hedge, a five escape route, and nine Swan Bay, three, five, and nine. That has been a look at Sha Tin on Sunday. We head back to Happy Valley on Wednesday night, and then a massive day, Monday the 12th of February, Tom, Chinese New Year Cup Day, and Trackside Live from midday on that day. Yep, there'll be plenty of entertainment, no doubt, at Sha Tin for Chinese New Year. Got the red packets ready, Paul? All set, yep, got plenty of them there. I'm sure we'll be giving them out shortly. And plenty of jackpots on Wednesday night, yeah, too. Yeah, there's plenty, plenty of money floating around. There is indeed. Before we get there, we'll see you for Classic Bile and Centenary Vars Day at Sha Tin on Sunday.